Okay, good evening, morning, or whenever it is you're watching this. So for those of you that have been following, I'm in my 2021 cricket, taxa cricket, and I'm doing something pretty fantastic right now is trying to upgrade my battery system. So I've got that Battleborn 100 amp hour battery in there, and I wasn't gonna get another one, but I ended up getting another one and that's actually on its way. So I'm gonna put one more in there. So I'm gonna have 200 amp hours in here. Why? Honestly, just because I can and I don't like that space in there. I'm like, if there's a space in there, it should be filled with something. So it's not like I need 200 amp hours, but more just I wanna fill that space. And I think maybe then I can get rid of the goal zero and not even use it. I don't know, but um, more to come on that. But for right now, though, something pretty cool just arrived today. Well, we're going to start off slow. There's a couple of things. So the first thing that came in is this little adapter right here, which is um, it's a, basically a 12-volt socket that I'm going to use to create one of these. Well, no, one of these right here. And I'm going to put that on the cover that goes here so that I have direct access to my batteries so I can plug in um, the goal zero, for example, or whatever other thing that I wanna plug in directly to the battery and not have to worry about, like the fuse in this, for example, is a five amp fuse or in this connection right here. So if I try to plug in my fridge or something like that, it just trips that. So you can't even plug in that fridge. So I've got the Dometic CFX, um, let me zoom out a little bit. Uh, CFX 55. So if I try to plug that into that port, it just shuts off. But when I use the one that's back here, I can actually plug into that and then the fridge uh, turns on or stays on just fine. So long story short, I got this to kind of give me some more options. The coolest thing though I just got is to replace this WFCO power center. So the model I have right now is a WF8740P. Let me zoom in so you can see that. And this is that fuse that I was telling you about that uh, controls that 12 volt, uh, 12 volt connection. So that will blow out and you'll actually see that light turns on. There's a little indicator light that'll turn on and you can see it when this is closed that, ooh, there's a fuse that's gone out. So, but anyways, I'm replacing that with another 87 series. So that's an 87 series and this is also an 87 series, but uh, it's the ending numbers that are different. So this is an 8740LIS-B, okay? This is a 8740P. So that difference right there is what makes this one lithium capable, all right? So let me just show you right there. So this one is lithium capable. It's exactly the same form factor and the same size and dimensions, okay? So it goes, it's supposed to drop right into that. So the next video is going to be um, me actually pulling this out and replacing it with uh, this new unit. I'm hoping it's not going to be too difficult. I think it's going to be pretty straightforward, but we will soon find out. But if those of you that are trying to switch to lithium, what happens with the... Uh, um, what you have in your Texas Cricket right now is that if you try to charge it, it will only charge the batteries to 85 to 90 percent. So when I charge mine, I actually get uh, like 13.69 volts and it stops right there. And I think the charge on the lithium is supposed to go all the way to 14.4 volts, if I'm remembering that uh, correctly. So the bottom line is that it doesn't charge your battery fully. So um, I don't know that it damages it, but in the end, I think if you're just always charging your battery to a certain amount, I personally think it could kind of ruin it, but I'm not a professional, so don't write this down and say, oh yeah, this guy on the internet said it. No. Um, so I'm going to replace it with the one that's actually supposed to charge lithium, and hopefully when I do that, everything is going to be fine, and hopefully it's not too complicated how to switch that out. So that is the project that is coming up. Stay tuned. I just wanted to update you with that in case you're trying to do the same thing. You at least know the model uh, or series of uh, Power Center you're supposed to get to do that. Another thing also is that there's the actual converter that's inside. And I, I would like to think you should be able to just pull that converter out and put another one in because nothing else changes. The fuse panel 
which is that over there and your AC section over here, nothing changes at all. So I think the only thing that changes in there is, is just that uh, um, converter that's in there. So this here was about, I'm trying to think now, I think maybe 300 and some dollars. So not crazy expensive, but if you could maybe just get the converter, it would be a little bit cheaper. I don't know, but when I called WFCO, this is what they recommended. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go with their recommendation. I told them, hey, this is what I have, and this is what I'm trying to do. They said, this is what they recommend. So I went with that. So that's, honestly, that's it for this video. Uh, hopefully this was useful. Um, and uh, watch out for the next video that's gonna be coming up of how I actually put that in there. Or if you're watching this years down the road, maybe that video is already posted. So I hope you guys have a good evening or good morning, depending on where you're watching. And I will catch up with you on the next video. Peace.